Welcome to the Carnivore Cast, a podcast focused on the carnivore diet and lifestyle, with practical advice from successful carnivores, citizen scientists, and top researchers. I'm your host, Scott Meslinski, and I'm here to speak with experts and experienced carnivores to get answers to your biggest and meatiest questions while helping you live your best life as a carnivore. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the Carnivore Cast on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you'll help us reach more people and continue to create content on Carnivore. There are also exclusive perks available, such as private Q&As, consultations with me, and more. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash carnivorecast. Check the episode description for the link. Thank you, and I'll see you there. Grace Wang, Ms. Grace on Instagram, that's ms.grace, has used a carnivore slash ketogenic diet and lifestyle to lose 35 pounds, get in the best shape of her life, conquer binge eating disorder, and her sugar addiction. She shares amazing information and content on her page, including science on keto slash low carb diets, cholesterol information, problems with plant-based diets, vegan myths, and much more. Welcome to the show, Grace. Hi, Scott. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Of course, really excited to chat with you today. Um, so let's let's start at the top. Where did your health journey begin? Um, well, I think growing up, I was generally eating a standard American diet and a lot of rice since I'm Asian and we we're raised on rice and soy sauce. Um, but I think I got a little obsessed starting in middle school. I remember my earliest memory of trying to control my weight was in sixth grade, where I was actually pretty skinny, but I remember trying to not eat so much at dinner. And then after dinner, I would go walking two miles and do 100 sit-ups every night. Like, I think for an wow, 11-year-old, wow. that's pretty intense. And I I don't know where I got the idea from, but uh, I just basically thought I was really fat and fluffy and had to lose weight. Um, and then that kind of spurred things on and I was really pretty good with not, um, eating any candy, but in ninth grade, um, I remember for Halloween, I went trick or treating and had a bite of candy and I literally could not stop myself after that. And I don't know if anyone else can relate, but once you get that sugar hit, you just keep going and going and going. And so that year I gained 30 pounds and it just kind of, I kind of lost control after that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I was pretty depressed through the years of high school just because I had gained weight and I couldn't stop. And it was just the cycle of binging and trying to restrict myself and then binging some more. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a pretty low time in my life. Yeah. I, yeah. I certainly can relate to a lot of that, um, you know, when I was younger, sugar was just a constant habit and mm-hmm. I almost didn't know what it felt like to not be craving it or not be eating it. Um, right. And what are some of the things that you tried along the way to, to fix your health? Where did, where did you first pick yourself up and say, I want to fix this? And, and what did you maybe try in the past? Yeah. So when I gained a bunch of weight in ninth and 10th grade, I tried to, um, so I joined cross country, my cross country team, hoping to lose weight, but I was still binging. So that didn't help. And that should have triggered something like, okay, exercise doesn't necessarily help you lose weight. But um, in fact, I, the year I joined cross country, I actually gained more weight because I was binging so much. Um, So I realized exercising didn't do anything, but it didn't really click for me yet. Um, and then slowly, I guess slowly after that, I was losing a little bit of weight, but not, um, you know, I didn't really understand nutrition or anything at that point. Um, but after that, I was still a heavy carb eater, you know, still had binges. Um, I had tried vegetarian. Um, I remember eating like a grape and nut salad every day. Uh, for lunch, I've tried the paleo diet. Um, I lost 20 pounds on that, but I gained it all back. And just knowing what I know now about nutrition, I realized, okay, I probably wasn't eating enough fat and the carbs were still fueling my binges. Um, yeah. And then I stumbled on low carb 
keto and eventually carnivore, which I think is the path that most people take to get to carnivore. Yeah. Yeah. And and can you talk a little bit more about binge eating disorder, what that's like for people who aren't familiar um, and, and, you know, how it affected your life and, and your mindset? Yeah, it just felt really lonely. Like I just turned to food for comfort and it was like this strong desire to like come home every day after school and just eat a bunch of food when no one was around. I mean, it's really shameful. So like I would hide wrappers after I finished a package or something, or I would throw out the trash because it was just like this huge secret that I couldn't tell anyone. And it just felt really lonely because, you know, they can't, it's not something you want to talk about with your parents or your friends. Like, I don't know. Um, it just felt, and I was kind of depressed also. Um, I think maybe the binge eating goes hand in hand with that, but it just felt like this black hole that you can't get out of. And I just, you don't feel good about yourself when you do that because you want to, it's just, it wears you down mentally. So like you want to try every day, like today is going to be the day I will not binge. Like I'll control my eating when I get home and it just never happened. So it would just like was a cycle of binging and restricting and binging and restricting. And it totally wears you down. Um, I started to wear bigger clothes. I didn't want to be seen. You know, my confidence was just shot from that. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can only imagine. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and, and what was your talk a little bit about what other health effects you were feeling? Otherwise, you mentioned depression, fatigue, um, weight gain, some of these things, but how is your health other than that? And maybe, um, what were the doctors saying to you? Well, I guess I never, they, I, okay. So my mom had was concerned about my weight gain. Um, but at the time I didn't even know really what binging, I didn't have a word or name to put that to. Like, I just knew I was just eating a lot. Um, and my mom had taken me to an acupuncturist, um, to try and help me lose weight. And that didn't help. Like they put the needles in my stomach and, you know, everything, but nothing helped. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much mostly what we tried just because I was in high school and, you know, I didn't really want to voice exactly what was happening. Um, like to the extent that it was to my parents, they just knew I was eating more and gaining weight, but they didn't really know how bad it was. Um, so that was one of the things that we tried. And yeah, just like I said, like with cross country, I was running, I mean, 12 miles a day, but ended up gaining weight. So that yeah. obviously yeah. <laughs> you can't out exercise a bad diet. Right? Yeah, I wish I knew that back then. <laughs> like, I've learned so many things along the way that I'm like, wow, what if I knew this about 15 years ago? <laughs> yeah. And and how did you find keto and carnivore? Can you talk about that evolution? Yeah, sure. So my brother actually told me about keto a long time ago before it hit the mainstream. And I really just thought it was bogus. I was like, yeah, okay, high fat, like that can't be good for you. You're just going to clog your arteries, just like everyone else says. Um, and then like three years later, I started doing low carb without upping my fats, just cutting out rice, noodles, grains. And I lost quite a bit of weight on that. And then I just gradually, I was like looking into keto. I was like, okay, wow, there's like science behind this. This is an actual thing and not just some bogus diet. Um, and then my brother also told me that Joe Rogan was doing it. So I was like, okay, there's, this might be legit. Um, so like most people, I heard Sean Baker's podcast on Joe Rogan and then Michaela and Jordan Peterson. And so gradually I was like, okay, let's do keto up to my fats. I was so scared to add butter to my steaks. I was just terrified. I was like, I don't want to get fat. I already did pretty good on low carb. Um, but you know, eventually you get used to it and you're like, okay, I'm not, I'm not gaining weight, eating a ton of fat. So yeah. 
And and what changed for you when you started doing keto and carnivore? Um, so I was always lifting. Um, but so I was able to lose weight and my muscle definition actually kind of showed for once. I remember like before when I was just eating a standard American diet, I had been exercising and lifting all the time, but no one could tell. Like I just I, I just looked like a regular person who didn't work out. Um, as far as like the other changes, I I used to have a lot of fatigue and that's all gone away. Like I have a ton of energy now. I'm almost too energetic. Like I'll wake up at the crack of dawn with no alarm. Um, but prior to that, I was falling asleep in all my classes throughout high school, throughout college. Um, it was just like a running joke for all my friends. Like, oh, like once you start talking, Grace will fall asleep or something. Um, yeah, I fell asleep at the movies. I fell asleep at work. And I've been talked to at all my jobs about falling asleep at work. So it's huge to be able to stay awake throughout the day and up until I have to sleep pretty much. Yeah. It sounds like it was having a major impact on other parts of your life. And what did you eat? How did your diet evolve um, in terms of the foods you're emphasizing? Yeah. So when I went to low carb, so I'd cut out all my grains and then um, going towards keto, I was just eating a lot of steak salads. So it was just like this, I mean, not a lot of steak, maybe half a pound a day for dinner. And then along with like this spinach, cucumber, feta type salad. Um, and that was great. Like I felt really good doing that. Um, I still had some digestion issues on that. So I've had bloating and constipation my whole life. Um, but it got slightly better with keto. And then my boyfriend was having a lot of digestive issues. So I suggested carnivore for him. And so in solidarity, I also decided to do carnivore at the same time. And it seemed like the right transition to go to, like, because we we're already eating meat and vegetables, might as well just not have to deal with putting a salad together and just go for the steaks. Um, so, yeah, we did. We started carnivore together and his digestion issues went away after like a month. He used to get up every morning with stomach pain and have to run to the bathroom a lot, like throughout the day. Um, whereas I have the opposite issue. I like just couldn't go, but with carnivore, I'm like my de- my digestion has been great and I'm regular and sometimes I still experience bloating, but not as much as before. Yeah. And, yeah. um, what's a day of eating look like for you now? What's, what's, uh, typical day um what foods do you include and not include how do you how do you map out your meals yeah so we actually get a cow share um every several months so we just kind of look in our freezer to decide what we want to eat and then I'll thaw that meat out the night before so i eat any part of the cow so i um i always ask for the organ meats from our butcher um, but usually it'll be steaks and bacon or burgers and bacon. And then, um, we also get a lot of liver. So all I've started making pate recently with that. Um, I've been experimenting a lot since this lockdown started actually, but it's been kind of fun because, um, at work I used to just bring hard boiled eggs and like a can of sardines every day, which I never got tired of. Um, but yeah, so usually it's just like burgers or steaks for dinner. And um, do you incorporate fasting at all? Yeah, um, I do intermittent fasting, usually an 18-6 regimen, but it really depends on how hungry I am. I've tried to move away from counting the hours. Like I used to be pretty obsessed with counting calories, counting hours. Um, when I first started fasting, I had the, the app like that shows the countdown. Um, but then I was getting so obsessed with it, like right down to the second I'd like start eating, you know? Um, but so I deleted that, 
um, because it was consuming my thoughts. Um, but yeah, right now it's 18, six. If I'm just full for whatever reason, you know, it'll stretch out to 20 or 23 hours a day fasting. And, um, you mentioned not counting calories or counting macros. Do you worry about like fat to protein ratios at all? I don't. Uh, I know when I first started keto, I was tracking my calories. Um, like, uh, I remember I had an Excel spreadsheet and I was like, okay, I'm going to count out. I counted out my almonds. I counted out my little oranges. I mean, I counted out everything because I was so terrified of regaining the weight. Um, but right now I don't count anything and that's, that was kind of my goal just to get away from any obsessive thoughts about numbers. Um, so no calorie counting, just eating to satiety. Um, yeah. And now my next thing to tackle is not trying to worry about my weight so much. Um, so I recently just put my scale away. Today's episode is brought to you by Optimal Carnivore, created by carnivores for carnivores and their new product, grass-fed bone marrow. It's the whole bone extract, which includes bone marrow, cartilage, and collagen peptides. Our ancestors would have eaten the whole animal, including the bones, and especially the marrow. All the nutrients and substances that your body uses to repair and maintain your bones, teeth, and connective tissues. The bone marrow context contains the same components as a home-cooked bone broth, but way easier without the hassle of sourcing high-quality bones, boiling them for days. And this product is gently freeze-dried, so all the prized nutrients are left completely intact. It's perfect for people who are traveling or don't have time to make bone broth. Visit www.optimalcarnivore.com slash carnivorecasts and use the code CARNIVORE10 to receive 10% off your purchase. Now back to the show. That's awesome. I really like getting away from trying to quantify everything and track everything. Um, how has that been for you mentally coming from a history of, I, I'm sure, you know, part of binge eating disorder, at least from what I've heard, is having mm -hmm. this element of control. Um, right. How do you feel about like food freedom versus control? Yeah, I used to be like it really consumed my thoughts during the day. I would think about what I wanted to binge on. I couldn't wait to go home and open up these packages or finish these. And another part of that is that you feel like you have to finish everything. So like if there is half a bag of chips left and you just feel like you want to finish the entire thing, there's no, no moderating it just, um, it was kind of like an all or nothing type thing. So it's been, uh, I guess a little bit hard to not weigh myself this past month, but I'm learning to deal with it just because it's put away and I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to pull it out. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's learned. I'm still learning just because I walk past it and I'm like, okay, maybe I want to pull it out and see how I'm doing, but I just have to learn that it doesn't make or break me. You know, like my value isn't associated with the number on the scale. Yeah. I yeah. Like that. I like that. And how about organs and supplements? Do you incorporate those at all um, around your diet? Um, Every so often I'll usually just consume it um, as is not like any, in any pill form, but I like the taste of liver. I love beef tongue. Kidneys, I I don't really like that much. Um, yeah, the, those are and heart. I don't. I find it a little bit too lean for me. But mostly liver and tongue. Yeah, those do it for me. Yeah, I've had a lot of trouble yeah. with liver myself or, or heart myself. Actually, I love liver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heart. I I don't know. I tried it in the slow cooker and it just was still kind of lean to me. But yeah. Yeah, it can be very tough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And how about beef versus non-beef protein and incorporating keto foods? Like, how do you feel? Um, like, I'm not dogmatic about it at all myself. I had a giant steak with some mushrooms for, for lunch and some yeah. uh, high-fat Greek yogurt. But how, how do you feel like incorporating some more keto foods and, and non-beef protein sources as well? Um, yeah. So for as far as protein sources, I do love eggs and I have nothing against anyone that wants to do keto or any other diet. 
as long as they're making an intentional choice to improve their health. Um, but like when I was keto, I was still eating keto treats. And I think that uh, spurred on some binges um, just because they totally emulate, you know, that's what they're there for. Um, the taste of sugar and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I lately I've been including avocados and mushrooms in my diet and I don't see any side effects, like no negative effects with those. Um, but I think I'll still, uh, err on the side of caution with anything sweet. So maybe not as many berries or, and I used to have kombucha, so not so much of that anymore, but yeah, I've been experimenting with adding things back in because I was pretty strict carnivore for a while. And now I'm like, okay, like I'll add, add in some avocado. Um, we have salmon every once in a while for a protein source. Um, chicken, I find that I never get satisfied off of chicken. Um, so I, I don't tend to eat chicken, but yeah. Yeah, I find that tough because I always want to have things like chicken wings. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's just so dissatisfying for some reason. Yeah, I feel like I just want something else after that. Like it just never does it. Yeah. yeah. And how about um, moving beyond diet for a little bit? Can you talk about a little bit? How has your knowledge expanded beyond your own personal diet to some of these other topics um, that you post about and have linked in your Instagram uh, link tree? Like, cholesterol, plant-based diets, vegan myths, what, which of those do you find most interesting and, and, and how has like changing your diet maybe got you more interested in those topics? Um, my interests always, I feel like they're always changing. Um, so when I first got into carnivore, I was reading about all the myths and one of my favorite websites is Kevin Stocks. Um, just because he mm. kind of talks, goes into depth and provides all the research links um, about like supporting the, um, you know, why the uh, the cholesterol thing is a myth or whatnot. Um, but lately, my my favorite topic is regenerative agriculture um, and how, you know, vegans are saying they can save the planet by just eating their fruits and vegetables imported from everywhere, which is, I mean, reading more and more on it, that's definitely not the case. Um, yeah, that's probably my favorite topic so far. And of course, with all this COVID stuff, I think um, it's more important now more than ever to be mindful of our metabolic health. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And I find the regenerative story becoming increasingly interesting and relevant um, th through what we're going through in the world today. Right. And another thing to add on that is that um, there's, I guess, every well, a lot of vegans will say, like, how can you um, love animals, but kill them and eat them? And it's that's just not the right argument. I think it's what's best for the planet and they don't think about all the animals they're killing when their vegetable or fruit trees are being planted. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about regenerative ag? Like what, what makes it so interesting to you and maybe what are some of the sources you you've found most helpful um, in diving deeper on that? Well, I don't know I a ton of about it. I just know that like just from a personal standpoint, a quarter cow can feed us for several months and it's from a local farmer um just, you know, maybe an hour away from Seattle. But if I was to eat like a vegan diet, I'd be choosing all these different fruits and vegetables that were flown in from places. Um and on that note, they're still killing animals and insects to plant those. So, I mean, a, a cow who was raised happily on a pasture, you know, getting to graze his whole life and being grass fed his whole life. I think that's a lot healthier for the environment and for us. Um, 
you know, in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's I agree. amazing. It's a- um, how many animals and organisms and how much work and energy and fuel goes into monocropping and creating vegan and vegetarian foods and processed foods um, from all around the world. Whereas it seems so simple, like a lot goes into raising a cow and slaughtering a cow. Sure, right. Still has to be processed. Um, mm-hmm. But one cow being able to sustain like a human for a year um, on exactly. average is an amazing thing. Right. And one of the sources, well, I don't know if it's kind of a source, but my one of my favorite documentaries is The Biggest Little Farm. It's on Hulu. Have you, I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what kind of um, got me into it and got me thinking about it a lot. That's awesome. Uh, people should definitely go check that out. And yeah. um, another topic, which is very relevant to my life right now, because I have a uh, 15-week-old puppy. Uh, named Chewy. Um, and so <laughs> I know you said you're feeding, or I've seen posts you're feeding your dogs raw. Um, can you talk about how you feed your dogs, how you decided on a raw diet? Yeah. So we have three pit bulls and the oldest one, um, sh- she wasn't doing so great about a year or two ago. Like her joints were achy. She couldn't walk so much. I mean, this was a girl who could jump up, you know, from the ground to like, I don't know, the seat of a truck or something before. Um, and obviously every dog ages. But when we switched, we decided to switch over to carnivore just because since we were doing carnivore, we're like, OK, well, this should work for the dogs also because it's their natural um, diet. And so we ease them into it. The first, it was kind of scary to do it for the first couple weeks because we we're leaving them at home. And there were like the adjustment period is always going to be tough, I think, just because they had been eating grains mostly. Um, so, yeah, there were accidents in the house for a couple weeks um, as we ease them into it. But now they're fully carnivore. So they just eat ground beef and our oldest girl is doing so much better. She's got a ton of energy. Um, she's always excited and we'll get up for walks. I mean, she is slowing down, but that's natural. Um, but it seems like she's doing a lot better. I think her health would have declined a lot faster if we had her on grain still. Yeah. I think, uh, what, from what I've read, even much older dogs who have eaten grains for much of their life can benefit from the transition. Yeah, totally. Yep. And you're just feeding yeah. them plain ground beef, no organs or special mix or bones or anything like that? Um, so the girl, she's the oldest one, just ground beef. We've tried incorporating organ meats and she refuses. So <laughs> dogs have their preferences too. She'll she's a ground beef girl. Um the other dogs don't, the boys don't care. They'll eat anything, literally anything. So um, so like when I got the beef heart, we would cut that up and give it to them. They eat, um, raw chicken, they'll eat fish, um, any organ meats and, and any meat really. We'll feed them like steak, little steak bites, um, all raw though. So, but they've been doing really well. Yeah. That's They're great. getting old, but, but doing well for, I think their age. Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about my experience. We Mm -hmm. transitioned Chewy directly to a raw diet um, when we brought her home at eight weeks. She was already eating a mix of raw and grain-free dog food from um, the people who raised her. They gave her some like natural kefir, um, some some Greek yogurt, as well as raw uh, meat and this grain-free food they liked. Part, that's part of why we chose the breeder because they they were more open to things like that. Um, and then when we brought her home, we were able to get um, this company based here in Boston called Dogs Gone Raw, able to get dog food for her. And it's a mix of tripe, which is like um, the inner stomach lining from yeah. uh, ruminants, a- along with some bone, some muscle meat, some organs, um, all gr- kind of ground together and she goes crazy for it. She absolutely loves it. 
eats it all up at every meal. Um, she seems very healthy, great digestion. She had no problem transitioning. And we also recently discovered, because she, she lives up to her name, she loves to chew things. Um, <laughs> th- we take a Kong, this, this toy, and we oh, stuff yeah, we it, mm-hmm. we stuff it with the tripe, the raw tripe, the raw dog food. Oh. And we put it in the freezer mm-hmm. and then we give it to her and she goes, crazy for it and she'll just stay in her crate and eat that and she loves that and then most recently this week i went and got um marrow bones big beef marrow oh. bones from the butcher mm-hmm. and we froze those and gave her one yesterday and she loved that too so we're very excited it's going really well and it's it's a cool adventure and you know everything we've read um and seen from different veterinarians and uh you know scientifically backed food sources is that mm-hmm. dogs just live longer have fewer health problems especially skin problems right. um joint problems being fed a natural diet like this um and a lot of the problems that people see with their dogs like when they get mm-hmm. older you know people see their dogs like scratching their backs on the ground they think they're just having fun like rolling around in the dirt usually means they have like severe skin issues um yeah. and itchy skin so it's actually very sad uh so mm-hmm. we're excited to see you know how her health develops of course our vet is very opposed to it but um, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know a, a lot of the just like with human food, a lot of the science and research out there, unfortunately, is, you know, naturally funded by Purina and some of these pet right. food companies. So you have to expect yeah. that. Well, that's exciting. I bet she's going to be a super healthy dog. We hope so. We hope so. Yeah. So far, yeah, so good. We do the, yeah, we do the marrow bones, too. Um, and they just go crazy for it. It keeps them occupied for a really long time. So, yeah, that's yeah. good. <laughs> Cool. Well, Grace, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. Thank you so much for sharing your story and chatting with me. Where can folks find out more about you? Um, My Instagram is ms.grace, and that's basically where I'm most active. Um, So, yeah, they can find me on there. And I really appreciate your time and for having me on. Of course, my pleasure. And uh, I'll link to that in the show notes and at carnivorecast.com. Thanks again, Grace. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Have a good one. You too. Bye now. Bye. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the Carnivore Cast on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you'll help us reach more people and continue to create content on Carnivore. There are also exclusive perks available, such as private Q&As, consultations with me, and more. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash carnivorecast. Check the episode description for the link. Thank you, and I'll see you there. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Carnivore Cast. If you enjoyed this episode, please review on iTunes. It really helps us out and share it with a friend. What questions would you like answered or who would you like to hear from in the carnivore research community? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Carnivore Cast or go to carnivorecast.com. You can also email me at info at carnivorecast.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep it carnivore.